the feedback controller. Feedback controller, we've already talked about how to design the feedback controller. How would I do that? I take this model of the process, right, which would actually be that times that times that. I would do IMC design or direct census or whatever I want to do. So I'm not really talking about that. I'm just talking about the feed forward controller. All right. So I need it to do a model-based design. As usual, I want a closed loop transfer function. And so because I'm interested in designing this controller, I want the closed loop transfer function between the disturbance and the output. Okay. So I've written it up there. And it's the usual formula that we use. Okay, so this is the formula I'm using. Pi, right, pi f over 1 plus pi e. So pi f is the feed forward path between d and y, and this is 1 plus everything in the feedback loop. So it's easy. I'll just do the denominator first because that's kind of a no brainer. The feedback loop hasn't changed at all. Right, so this feed forward controller and this measurement, they're not in the feedback loop. There's no effect on the feedback loop at all. So the 1 plus pi e, or pi is what it's called, also known as 1 plus GOL, is just that thing times that thing times that thing times that thing. Same as it always is. That's that up there. So order doesn't matter. If I want GM, GC, GV, GP. Okay? All right. Now, what is the feed forward path between D and Y? Well, the idea here is there's two paths. The path that normally exists goes just through GD plus another path that you've created. So I'm going to add these two paths together. So D can go through this first one, which is just GD. And then there's another way that it can get there. It can go through GT, GF, GV, and GP and get to the same place. Okay. So that's where the second term comes from. And again, order doesn't matter, so I won't worry about it. G, V. So when we had, um, when you didn't have feed forward control, it, this is the same as it always was, just GD over this thing. So this is the part you've created by adding this feed forward controller right there. Okay. All right. So if someone asks you, what would you like the transfer function between the output and the disturbance to be? Right. Well, let's go back. Remember when we first did like direct synthesis design? I, I asked, what would we like the um, relationship between y and the set point to be? Well, if you had your choice, you'd make it to be 1. You can't do that <laughs> for reasons I explained when I lectured on that material. but. That's what you really want, right? This would make the output always equal to the set point. This, this was problematic, right? Because we learned that. Whoops, sorry. We designed controllers like this, and then we learned that the best we could kind of do was this. That was the whole direct census IMC stuff that we talked about. But if someone asked, what would you like this transfer function to be? What would your answer be? Every time I teach the class, as I lack, I don't get the I don't get the students involved. This is your big chance, okay? I'm, I'm I know the answer. Um, right. You'd like to, this says I'd like the disturbance to have no effect on the output at all. So if the disturbance changes, the output is invariant. That'd be awesome, okay? So if you look at this transfer function, maybe you can do this, right? Because if, if I can make this numerator equal to 0, then this thing is 0. So that's where I came up with this, OK? If I make this numerator 0, that makes this transfer function 0. Now, how am I going to make this numerator 0? Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong. I'm, I'm already way down here. OK. I'll come back up to this in a second. Okay, so same. Th this is the argument I'm making. So if we want perfect, what I call perfect control, that means disturbance will have no effect on the output. That means I would like this numerator to be zero, right? So if I look at the numerator to make it, I better have something I can um, design to make it zero because it's not going to be zero by chance. So everything in this equation is determined in principle except GF, right? That's the d that I'm trying to design GF. That's the feed forward controller here. I'm going to design that. 
So all this equation over here is, is I set the numerator equal to zero and solve for gf. You get that right there. It's not very complex. Okay. So the problem is going to be, can I implement this thing? So in principle, it looks easy, right? You just you get a model of the disturbance transfer function, the process transfer function, maybe the transmitter and the valve, or maybe those are all lumped together. It doesn't make any difference. And you, you take the ratio, and that's your controller. Okay. The problem with this equation is sometimes you can't implement this, which I'll talk about in a minute. Okay, back up to this, sorry. The point of this was to say, if you look at the characteristic equation of this system, right, it's the denominator of this closed loop transfer function, it's not affected at all by this controller. It's like it's not there, it doesn't make any difference. So the good thing about this kind of procedure is this controller may or may not work well, but it won't have any effect on stability, because it's not in the feedback loop at all. So no, no effect on stability of the system, which is good. So that makes you feel like you can design this separately, right? I'll design this controller using usual tools to make sure this is stable. And then in a second phase, I'll design this controller to try to eliminate the disturbance. I can do these two things separately. Whoops. All right. How are we doing on time here? This is one of those lectures I'm just hoping will end soon because I'm really, really tired. I'm doing better than I should, but I'm not really, I don't really remember what I said five minutes ago, but that's fine. All right, so um, this is just, just to give you an idea um, to make this a little more concrete, I'm taking this picture here and I'm specializing it to this particular system here just so you can see what the different elements are. Okay, so in that particular system, right, I'm trying to control the composition coming out of the tank, so that's the controlled output. Obviously, I have to measure that composition. I'm going to compare that composition to what I'd like the composition to be in the same units, right? This just converts units. I'll generate an error signal. That'll be operated on by my feedback controller. That'll generate a signal that will control the, manipulate the valve, right? There's a valve on that stream, um, the second stream. That'll change the flow rate W2, and that'll affect the process. So, and then for the feedback controller, well, I should say, up here you have the disturbance. In this particular case, it's the composition of the other stream. It has some transfer function it goes through, and it affects the output through this path. So to compensate for this, I'm going to measure this composition. I'm going to send this composition to a feed-forward controller. And this feed-forward controller, in principle, will, co will generate a signal here that once it propagates through these other two transfer functions, will cancel the disturbance going through there. That's, that's the idea. That's what this equation does over here. It tries to, you try to find a feed-forward controller that exactly cancels the effect of the disturbance going through here by generating a signal going through there, okay? All right, so this is just specializing the diagram to this particular case, not a, not a massive achievement. Oh, this is more than I can bear. Um, let's see how much time we have. Okay, well, I'm afraid we have to do this, people. It's, it's not... Usually I would revel in this type of thing, but now I just want it to go away. All right. All right, so here's our design equation. So I'm just, I'm just giving you three examples of trying to implement this equation. It's, they're all pretty simple. I'm just going to give you all the transfer functions. I'm going to plug them in. I'm going to give you a, I'm going to tell you what the controller is. And then I'm going to tell you either you can implement that thing or you can't. Okay. So the first case is disturbance is a first order transfer function. Process is a first order transfer function. The valve is just a gain, and the measurement device for the disturbance is just a gain also. So that's all four transfer functions you need in there. So you plug all those things in, and you get something that looks like that. Okay. So the question is, is that implementable? My argument is yes. This is also what's known as a lead lag unit, which we'll talk more about. So it's really a gain. This is just the gains, ratio of gains. We can just call this some gain of the controller if you want. And then it multiplies it something that looks like this, first order and S divided by first order and S. They call this thing a lead. This is frequency response stuff. It's just historical. Call this a lead. They call that a lag. This is called lead lag. Okay. And this is the standard form of feed forward control, and you can definitely implement this thing. What I mean by implement it, you can implement this without having to take the disturbance, uh, derivative of the disturbance, and you don't know the, need to know the disturbance in the future, which I'm about to show you can happen. Okay. So this is implementable. Okay, looks good. Let's say this is exactly the same problem, except now the disturbance transfer function has a time delay. So exactly the same. So because you, 
have the GP here, sorry, the process, screwed up there. Disturbance, same thing. Process transfer function has a delay. Because the GP is in the denominator here, that's going to generate an e to the minus s in the denominator. That's also known as e to the plus s in the numerator. Okay. So how does this controller work? Well, what it does is you take the disturbance, operate on it with this transfer function, right? That's what the picture says. Okay. Well, you actually operate on the measurement, but so what does this imply? So this implies you need the disturbance. This implies you need to know the disturbance in the future. So it's a causality problem, right? It's not, it's not causal. To implement this controller, so let's say the time delay is five minutes. To implement, I have to know what the disturbance is going to be in five minutes. I'm not going to know. I don't know. I'm not clairvoyant. Therefore, I don't know what the disturbance is going to be in five minutes. So this is not directly implementable. Now, if you wanted to implement it, you could do the following. You probably do this on your test, right? You come up here, get your eraser, and just and remove the time delay and pretend like it's not there. Right? I mean, that could work. If this time delay is not too large, then using the current value of the disturbance might be a good representation of what it's going to be in the future, and it might, might work okay. But I mean, as written, not implementable. Okay. And then the other problem you can have has to do with what we introduced this concept earlier. It's called properness. So same example up here, but now I've changed again the process transfer function. So now instead of being first order, it's second order. Okay. Compute, plug everything in here, you get something that looks like this. Okay. When we talked about properness of transfer functions, I tried to convince you if this numerator order in terms of s is 1 greater than the denominator, that means you need to take the derivative of whatever the signal is the, is the input to this thing. If this was too higher, it would need to be second derivative of that. So we were satisfied with that when we did PID control because we knew that meant you had derivative control and that was okay. But you, you don't le usually implement derivative control on disturbances. Okay. So to implement this, if you took this all back in the time domain, which we don't have time to do right now, you'd see this involves taking the first order derivative of the disturbance with respect to time. Okay. Now, so I said this, th this is what's known as the transfer function being the controller is not proper. So it requires a dis and typically, we don't want to implement a controller that requires derivative of the disturbance, right? Because I've been through this. Disturbance is a noisy signal. Take the derivative, it's quite noisy. So in implementing this equation, we just have to realize that sometimes this is going to work, be fine, and sometimes it's going to be problematic. Okay. So um, I'm going to stop there. So I'll, I'll pick up the rest um, Tuesday. <laughs>